All right, hey guys, we're going to talk about hypothermia and clothing layers for your outdoor activities. Now, this is a topic that we normally see late fall when the you know when winter starts to appear but people either concentrate more on the layers but i think what i want to do today is do a little bit more of a review or overview of hypothermia the causes of hypothermia and what we can do to avoid it which is layers when we're doing outdoor activities so stick around all right so what is hypothermia hypothermia is when our core temperature drops by a degree or two. So when do the stages of hyperthermia become a little bit more apparent? Well, technically, hyperthermia can occur at any temperature or outdoor temperature where it is lower than your core body temperature. But if you're looking at some books and resources, they pretty much start to say when you start to go below 15 degrees Celsius, you start to experience hyperthermia a little, or the symptoms a little quicker. Now, why is that important? Well, out here in Nova Scotia, uh, if you look at the average temperature during the year, uh, below 15 degrees is nine to 10 months out of the year. So we're constantly in a state where we can get hyperthermia. So this is a topic that is really actually kind of important for us. So it's really good to know and to experiment with uh, clothing layers based on our, our outdoor activity or to plan adequately so that we don't get the initial stages of hypothermia. Now we've all experienced maybe the very slight mild hypothermia, which is anytime we need to put on the sweater, crank up the heat, any of those, get out of the elements, those type of situations. So let's review how we lose body heat. So we lose body heat four ways. We lose it via radiation. Heat just escapes our body, right? We also lose it by conduction. If we were to lay down here on the ice, that cold surface sucks away the heat. Same thing as we start laying in the snow, right? If you don't have proper insulation. So that's conduction. Convection is the other method where uh, wind, wind blows, takes, blows the heat away from our body. That is another way. And, uh, and the final way is evaporation. That's when we're wet or sweaty, heat evaporates from us. So those are the four ways that we lose body heat. All right, so what are the signs of hypothermia? There's different stages of hypothermia, but the first stage that you're probably going to see are shivers. You're going to see the umbles, stumbles, fumbles, mumbles. Uh, you're asking a question to somebody and they're replying nonsense, almost like they're drunk. Uh, those are the stages of hyperthermia that we really want to uh, get in control of. And what we normally would do or say to that person is get the internal stove going, get the internal heat, jump in jacks, start doing, be more active, do that kind of stuff, ingest hot liquids, all those things. Now, now if you want to see hypothermia in, in action, Go to any road race, a running, a running race, early spring, late fall, even around this time of year, a uh, 10, mi uh, 10 mile or a half marathon, go to the three quarter mark and you will see people in a hypothermic state, especially when the weather is below 15 degrees, 13 degrees, 11 degrees Celsius. Uh, you will most likely see people doing both sides of the road. You're asking them a question. They're answering gibberish, uh, they're stumbling on you know, asphalt. Um, in those situations, and I've seen a few people do this, you know, they're in the ambulance, they, they're plugged into IV, they got blankets, they got everything, and they think they're fine. So that's why we wanna be really careful about hypothermia and really make sure that we don't get into that state. So how do we control this is by wearing layers. So. Let's talk about clothing layers. Now there's lots of videos that talk about layers. I'm just gonna do, give you the brief overview of them. And, uh, and for this stuff, it's up to the person. I find there's, there's two types of people with terms of layers. There's people who run hot and who's people who run cold. All right, so today I'm wearing three layers. And first off, we got our base layer. This is a layer that is closest to our skin, pretty much as tight as possible. I like to call this the Spider-Man layer. All right, you think about Spider-Man suit, it's pretty skin tight, that's pretty much what you want. The purpose of that layer is to wick moisture off your body. Try to get that above the skin. 
The second layer is my mid layer, and this is your insulating layer. So this can be, like today it's thin, it's minus 17 Celsius with no wind. So uh, I decided for a thinner insulating layer, but this is where you're gonna play a lot with. This is gonna be you know light fleece or mid or heavy fleece based on your activity. So you're gonna find out what one works for you for your activity. So the purpose of this, and I just said it about a couple times now, it insulates you. Now the last layer, which is our outer layer, this is where it protects you from the elements, wind and rain or snow. Today, I'm opting for an all wool ensemble. Uh, there's a lot of questions whether or not you wanna do cotton, wool, or synthetic. I usually mix and match synthetics and wool. Uh, and the reason why you hear a lot of people don't talk about cotton, or you may have heard the term cotton kills, well, that's because cotton has certain properties that it's not quite you know, beneficial if you're doing uh, outdoor activities for, for a long time. One of them is the properties of cotton. Cotton, uh, when it gets wet, it's not very insulating. So compared to wool, wool can maintain a good chunk of its insulating properties when it's wet. Uh, the other thing with cotton, it absorbs a lot of water. Right? It absorbs a lot of weight. It's great when you're getting out of the shower or you're washing your dishes. It's not great when you're you know, getting wet hiking or getting your sweat. So we kind of want to avoid cotton. All right, hopefully this video has been uh, helpful for you. Now, based on where you are, you might have a different set of requirements in terms of your layers, depending where you are. This is what I'm wearing right now. Works for me in Nova Scotia, but if you're in the Midwest or out on the West Coast, uh, you might have different requirements. You might need more insulation or you might need an outer, outer layer that's actually waterproof or windproof. You know, th and that's the beauty about the layering system. You can mix and match and plan based on the activity that you're doing. Put down in the comments and we'll talk to you guys next time.